Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to be creating a character controller that uses Fish Networking's production version 2 to be synchronized across the network, okay? And it's going to have things like smoothing, uh, preventing cheating and stuff like this, okay? So to get started, I created a new project in Unity 2022.3.49f1 and I just added some simple setup things like a plane mesh for the ground, a network manager with a tugboat component, which is the transport, a transport manager, which we are going to be using later, a time manager, a player spawner, and a network HUD. All of these components, except for the network HUD, come with fish networking in the free version as well, okay? And what the network HUD is, it is just a simple script which allows me to start and stop servers and clients, okay? Then we have our player prefab, which is just a capsule with a character controller and a network object component, all are using the default settings. And then we have our predicted character controller, which is just an empty script, which we are going to use to write our code, okay? So before we start and do anything, let's go to our network manager and ensure that we have set up our time manager correctly, okay? So the first thing we need to do is check the timing type. We need to make sure it's tech because we're going to be using prediction. And under the physics header, we are going to see that we have something called physics mode. We need to make sure it's using the time manager value. This is because when using prediction, it's better to make sure that the time manager is the one handling all the timing relating things like update calls, tick calls and post tick calls. Okay. And we have the transport manager, which we're going to be using later to simulate latency, but we're not going to do this now because we don't have anything really. And that's pretty much it. All the other components are just there for, like, they are added by default when using fish networking, but I just added, added them here to make sure things are easy to understand and follow. Okay, and now let's go ahead into our character controller or predicted character controller script. Double click on it and let's go ahead and begin writing code, okay? So the first thing we need are a bunch of variables related to movement, movement speed, gravity scale, and stuff like this. So these are just normal variables, so there is nothing really to explain here. So let's go ahead and do this. So like I said, these are just your typical variables, movement speed, jumping speed, the gravity scale, the look speed, and all these interesting things, okay? Um, I just need to note that this is not going to be a first-person character controller, but this is just going to be a general one where the character moves around, looks around, and stuff like this. So nothing really um, specialized, but it can be adapted, and the basic principles apply in case of first-person, third-person, and top down for example okay so now that we have the movement related variables uh, this tutorial we are using in the input system um, which is unity's new uh, well input system we need to define some fields which are going to hold our actions which are basically like the inputs that are going that we are going to use to move the character around okay so I'm going to do this right now And now we have the, uh, sorry, these three actions, which are going to be initialized later on. But that's pretty much it for the basic um, movement related things, like inputs and variables which control the movement. Now let's go down and begin writing actual network related code. So as you notice, uh, you might have noticed, sorry, I have a network behavior up here, which is the class from which our class derives. You must have this, otherwise none of this will work, which should just really be obvious since this is network-related code. 
Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to write We are going to override the, the onStart network method, which is a method that's called on this object whenever the server or the client starts, but it's only ever called once. We're going to use this to initialize our actions and some components which we are going to use. Okay, speaking of which, let's go up here and add two private um, fields. Um, the transform field is basically the, a cache or a field that will hold the transform uh, value. So we don't have to keep calling transform, 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 which as far as I know, it does a native call, which is something that might slow down your code if used frequently. But um, I think a while back Unity optimized this, but I just do it to be sure. And it's like easier to read for me at least. Um, and we have our character controller down here, which is, well, our character controller that we're going to use to move around. Now, inside the onStart network, instead of grabbing these, uh, sorry, instead of uh, just initializing uh, these by using get components, I'm going to use try get component to ensure that if the component is missing, for example, I can log a message or something. So I'm going to say transform equals this transform, but then I'm going to say if try get component let me just say out um character controller i'm gonna invert this expression and i'm going to say if we don't have this component present on this object let's log an error for example or a message that will tell us um that this is missing this is just for debugging purposes And as you can see, we just log a an error message, sorry, a log message. And actually, let's make this a warning to notify us that we don't have this uh, character controller component present. Now, it's time to subscribe to a couple of events on the time manager. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. So as you can see, we have a tech method, or oh, sorry, event, the time manager, which is basically invoked every time the time manager ticks, okay? And then we have this on post tech, which is an, an event that is invoked after the tech, okay? This is automatically invoked by the time manager. You just have to subscribe to it. And as you can see, these are my signature long variable names, um, which we are going to create in a moment. Let's, so let's go down and override the on stop network method. Inside of here, I'm just going to copy this and replace these with a subscription or a minus, whatever you want to call it. So just to make sure we unsubscribed from the uh, events. Now let's go and override the onStart client method, which is a method that is called by Fish Networking when this object is initialized on the client. As you can see here, uh, this is like we are overriding the methods above here, nothing special, but we are going to add a check to make sure that we are the owners of this object. And Fish Networking provides a property which allows us, allows us to do this. So let's go ahead and say if. So here we're basically saying if we're not the owners of this object, just exit. Okay. And why we are doing this inside the owner only or for the owner only is because we're going to initialize the actions which we're going to use for movement. So let's go down and do this. <clears throat> uh, 
here I am using the input system's default actions or project-wide actions, which is something you can configure in your project settings. We're going to take a look at it at the end of the video, but right now uh, I suggest if you're unfamiliar with the input system, you go check out the documentation and come back. But it's very, a very simple concept. Here we're declaring a local variable, which is called player action map, which we assign the value of actions.findActionMap. What we are doing here basically is searching for the list of items or actions, which is called player. Okay, and this is something created by default. And we are going to supply a boolean here to throw an error or an exception if this action map is not found. This is something you should always do because if you're missing inputs, this isn't something you want to leave until the runtime, okay? Uh, or like after you release the game, you need to make sure there is no silent errors or something missing, okay? And down here, I'm going to assign my move action. I'm going to say equals player action map. Uh, just find action move like we did above we supply a boolean and call it say it's true to throw if not found now we do the same for the two other actions so here it's going to be the jump action and the last one is going to be the look action we need to change the names Okay, and that's pretty much it for the input actions. Now that we have initialized those, we need to have some local variables to store the values of these inputs. Let's go up here and let's write them. Okay, so we have these four variables, which should be very self-explanatory. The horizontal input is your input when pressing left or right, and the vertical input is when pressing the W or S keys, or up or down, and the jump is when you're pressing the jump key, for example, in our case, it's space, and then we have a float here, uh, sorry, a float here called uh, your input, which is the input on the y-axis, or when you have, let's say you have a bar, and you're holding it um, straight in your hand, and you're rotating your hand itself, um, that's basically the your input here. It's, it's quite confusing when explained without any visuals, but I will uh, show it in the editor once we are done. So let's go down here, and inside our update method, so, which we haven't written yet, let's actually do this, say private, We're going to do the same as owner check. And now we're going to read the values of these inputs and assign it in to our fields. As you can see here, we're reading the value of the move action which is, in, in this case, it's defined in the editor as a vector2, basically an x and y. So, and we're going to use the fields of this vector to assign our horizontal and vertical movement uh, fields. So, just like this, we have our movement action. Uh, sorry, our movement input. Um, done. Now for the jump action, we're not going to read the value of the action, we're going to check if it's pressed. So this is a method supplied by Unity's input system, which basically checks if the input has been pressed for a certain period of time. As far as I know, we can check the source, but it's outside of the scope of this video, so we just have to use jump equals jump action dot is pressed. Now for the look input, we're going to do something similar to the move action. In this case, it's a vector two as well, X and Y.
and we're going to assign our, our look action value to x, which is the movement on the horizontal axis, in this case, when you're moving your mouse left and right, to the your input. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Now, let's go up and add another field, which I missed. Um, I'm going to call it is grounded, so private bool is grounded. And let's go down here, and I'm going to say, we give it the value of our character controller that is grounded property, okay? Um, so let's go down now and add our two met missing methods up here. So let's copy their names because I'm lazy. And let's get the other name. So, these methods we're going to leave empty for now uh, because they require other things which we're going to do right now. Let's go all the way down and write our replication data and reconciliation data. Now, most of the people, when they hear these two words, they get scared for some reason, at least in my dreams. Uh, so, um, basically what replication data is, is the inputs it's a data structure which holds the inputs that your character or object or whatever would use to move around. For example, if you have a player and he is pressing the left key, in this case, it's providing input for the horizontal input uh, field. So how do we transport this? Using the data structures provided by fish networking. And the reconciliation state, uh, sorry, data, is basically a data structure which holds the variables or sorry, fields that need to be reconciliated by the server. For example, the velocity of the character, position of the character, and rotation of the character, okay? All of these sound like big words, but they are literally the simplest thing about this entire uh, video. So let's go all the way down and begin writing them. So we have a public So we have a public struct called replication data, which derives or implements in this case, since this is an interface uh, called iReplicate data. Let's implement the missing members, which uh, are getTech, setTech, and dispose. All of these three methods me methods are used internally by fish networking. So we're going to remove the exception throwing. I'm going to add a comment here and say used internally. Is internally by fish networking and for the get tech method i'm going to go all the way up and i'm going to provide a field private field called tech and i'm just going to return it from here okay um i'm going to also add the read only keyword the read only keyword in this case tells the c sharp compiler or in this case the mono compiler uh, runtime or whatever it's called, um, that this method will not modify the state of the structure. This is unrelated to the video. It's a micro optimization. It prevents copying the structure. It's always good. You should always try to make your methods uh, inside structures at least uh, have no side effects or be pure. So in this case, I'm just going to set this to read only and return the tech. And that's it. Inside the set tech method, I'm going to assign the tech. And that's it. We're done with the basic implementation. Now, what is this structure going to hold? This structure is going to hold basically a copy of the fields I declared above, horizontal input, vertical input, etc. So let's go ahead and declare those. And as you can see, what we did here is basically one-to-one -one copy of the fields we have above, but inside the structure. Notice that I made all of them read-only, which is what you should always do to your fields. 
if you are not going to modify them. And in this case, we're not going to modify those after constructing the structure. So I'm going to go ahead and ask Rider to generate me a constructor. And this is just to save time. I don't want to keep typing random words. Um, as you can see, we just supply the variables inside the constructor, nothing, nothing really special. And let's go now and create our reconciliation data structure. Let's go down here. Similar to the replication data, we have reconciliation data, which implements the iReconcile data uh, uh, interface. And we need to have our private uint tick. Let's return the tag. And that's very much all we need to do here. Just like above, I'm going to add the read only keyword. And that's it. Now, the reconciliation data, like I said, is going to hold what is required to be reconciled by the server. Okay, so if, for example, a player tries to cheat and moves a billion kilometers to the west, for example, uh, he will be dragged back by the server. And this is what's basically called reconciled. The server tries to correct any discrepancies between the client and the server. Okay. This is one of the most important things about prediction. So what are we going to write here? Literally only three fields. And that's really all we need to do is su supply it. Uh, a position, rotation, and velocity uh, values. In most cases, if you're not doing something with a velocity, you can just take position and rotation, and that's pretty much all we need to do here. I'm going to ask Rider to generate me a constructor as well. As we'll see, very simple and beautiful stuff. And that's pretty much it for our data structures. All the incoming is going to be related to how we're going to move the character itself. So let's go all the way up and inside tech event handler what i'm going to do is write an if statement with exactly two branches if and else and i'm going to say if is owner else so we have here we check if we are the owners otherwise we're going to do something else so here i'm going to construct my replication data so replication data oh, I thought I, I made a typo right there. okay so I'm gonna say replication data equals new horizontal vertical um, is grounded jump and the yo input and that's how we construct our data now we need to go down here and supply it to a method called replicate which we haven't created yet but we're going to recreate so replicate and otherwise, we're going to call the same method, so replicate. Oh, lovely. Uh, replicate with the default value of the replication data. We're going to come to this part later, but let's go ahead and implement our replication method or replicate method. So let's go down here. We can have a private void replicate. And this method is a little special because it requires a specific set of parameters and an attribute. So the attribute we in question is the replicate attribute. And we have to supply the replication data, obviously. And then we need to supply the replication state, replicate state. And then we're going to supply it the channel. Oh, excuse me channel and give it the default value of unreliable. Uh, 
here you should always give these default values okay they will be automatically uh, hand supplied by fish networking and they are used internally as well so anything apart from this sort of parameters is going to throw a compile time error okay now let's go here and inside our replicate method um i like to call it replicate because it basically replicates our movement but you can also call it move run inputs whatever i like just to call it replicate inside of here we're going to do all the movement related logic but for now we're going to do leave it empty like this and go up and we now need to declare our uh, velocity field velocity like you can see here let's go all the way down and implement our um, movement uh, behavior so right here first thing we need to do is declare a float and we're going to call it tech delta um, here instead of using time dot delta time like you would usually do we use the tick delta because the ticking delta itself is going to be different from the delta time so if for example your game your tick rate is 60 and your game is running at 240 frames per second if you use the time dot delta time, you will see that things move in like slow motion because of the how small the delta is going to be. But if you use the time manager dot delta time, sorry the tick delta, it's going to provide you with the delta between ticks, and it's provided in double due to precision. But we can just simply cast it to a float. The loss in precision isn't really going to affect us. So um, what I have down here is going to be a very simple movement uh, that I usually use for first-person controllers. I'm just going to adapt it to this type of controller. So let's go ahead and declare a couple of local variables and I will explain them after I have written them. So like you can like as you can see here, I have my let's collapse the explorer because this is just wasting space. Um, this desired velocity is basically telling us what direction we would like to move in next. Okay, um, I can have a two separate floats, but I just like to write uh, write it like this to use simple vector expressions like I do here, and I did a mistake, which is using the transform itself, and as you can see. That writer tells us that repeated property access is inefficient. Again, this might not be true in Unity 2022 or 2023 and above, but I'd just like to cache the transform just in case. So let's select both of those and use our local field instead. Here I'm giving I'm assigning it transform.write times horizontal input. So for example, if our write is negative one and our horizontal input is negative one as well, it's going to be one. So it's going to be moving to the right. Um, basically, this is giving it the, dire the direction and we have the transform forward. So if we have um, our forward is one and our vertical input is one, so we're going to move forward as well. So think of this transform that forward is the blue arrow in the uh, scene view and the right and transform that right is the right, uh, sorry, red arrow in the scene view multiplying them by the input uh, horizontal input which is between negative one and one is going to move you left or right and forward multiplying it by negative one or one is going to move you forward or backwards and now we multiply it by the movement speed movement speed is well the speed at which we move but this might result in the character moving faster when moving diagonally so for example holding w and d which is what we don't really something we don't really want to happen so how do we fix this there are multiple ways but i usually like to do it like this so i'm going to go and say desired velocity equals vector three dot climb magnitude and we give desired velocity here and movement speed here this is going to climb the magnitude or the value of our vector to our movement speed so no matter what we're always going to move at the maximum speed of movement speed okay and now we're going to go down here and say velocity.x equals desired velocity.x and velocity.z equals desired velocity.z. So this is how we move left and right, uh, forward and backward, like I explained a million times. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, let's go down here. And now we're going to check if we are grounded. So here we're checking, are we grounded? If true, I'm going to set the velocity dot y to 0, 0.0f. So basically the vertical or the up and down velocity to zero. Then inside here, I'm going to check if data dot jump. So we're going to jump or up or depending on your character, you might have a different jumping direction. But in this case, since we're using the character controller, we're just going to jump up. So here I'm going to go ahead and say velocity dot y equals jump speed. Okay. Um, now let's go here and say else. So if we're not grounded, we need to fall. So let's apply the gravity. So I'm going to say velocity dot y plus equal physics dot gravity dot y times tech delta. Uh, as you can see here, we're just up adding the gravity since this is negative by default inside of Unity. That's why we're adding it which is going to subtract it from this one here. We're not assigning it, we're adding it to our velocity. So we fall down smoothly and at an accel like using acceleration, not just an absolute falling speed. Um, and we're going to multiply this here by the gravity scale. So if you find that the falling speed is too slow, you can increase it. If you find it too fast, you can decrease it. And we're going to move down here and let's take a look and that's pretty much it for the movement we don't really need to do anything else let's go here and say character controller dot move um, velocity times tick delta you might notice something i did here i might i multiply the physics dot gravity by the gravity scale and tick delta here and then i am multiplying the velocity by the tick delta here since this is a very large value adding it constantly to the y um, axis of our velocity is going to make us fall at an insane speed but multiplying it by the tech delta is going to smooth the increase okay like i said acceleration um slowly and sorry gradually so that we fall yes but at an increasing speed not at an insane speed okay uh, and here we multiply our velocity by the tech delta so this is going to be decreased quite a bit which is the required behavior or the desired behavior in our case. And now for the rotation, we're just going to use a very simple uh, piece of code. We're going to use transform uh, rotate. I'm going to say um, 0 0.0f, or actually let's just say vector 3 up times data dot your input times log speed. Of course, this is an efficient multiplication uh, Order because now we're multiplying the vector which creates a new vector which we then multiply it by the speed which creates a new vector the better way to do this is to surround these two by parentheses like this so they are multiplied first and then the vector is multiplied only once so a single vector is created and that's pretty much it for the replicate method now let's go ahead and create our reconcile method our reconcile method is first going to be used inside our uh, host tech event handler, but we need to do something first. Inside here, I'm going to go ahead and say create reconcile, which is a, which is a method used by sorry provided by the network behavior, which we will need to override. I'm going to go down here and override it. So override create reconcile, and basically what I'm doing here is creating the reconcile, which is basically supplying the reconciliation data. Okay, so I'm going to reconcile data. Uh, and we're going to say, um, sorry, recon, what the frick? Sorry for that. Reconciliation data equals new. And we need position, rotation, and velocity. So how do we do this? We're going to go down here to transform. So instead of accessing dot position on dot rotation like sequentially, we just get them at once using this method, which is much more efficient. So position 
and rotation and give it our velocity as well and here we are just going to see say reconcile with this data so our reconcile method is basically going to do the opposite of this now we're getting the position rotation and velocity the reconcile method is going to use this these values to correct our position and rotation and velocity in case of a discrepancy so let's go here and edit so private And we also need a special attribute here and a, an exactly two parameters that reconciliation data and the, uh, the channel. Oh. And as you can see here, what we need to do is literally the opposite of this. We're going to assign velocity equals data not velocity we need to transform dot set position and rotation to data dot position data dot rotation and that's pretty much all we need to write to have our own um, uh, predicted character controller let's just confirm everything is as it should because i'm just doing this off the top of my mind so i might miss a couple of things but everything seems okay uh, let's go inside of Unity now to check if things are working correctly or not. First of all, I'm going to go to my network manager. Let's collapse all of these uh, things. Check our player spawner. We have our player prefab, which is, like I said, just a cute looking, looking guy. Let's add the predicted character controller and tweak it. So we have movement speed, let's say 5, jump speed of 10. Gravity scale of 2 and lock speed of 2.25, which I find I found to be very reasonable. And let's go back and we should just enter play mode. Oh, I missed a crucial part here. Let's go to our player prefab again. And as you can see, the network object, we have enable prediction, which we need to enable. And we have a bunch of things here and they are all very simple, let's explain them. Interpolation is basically how smooth or how many frames Fish Networking is going to use to smooth the character, okay? Uh, movement and rotation and stuff like this. And then we have the spectator, which we basically, again, uh, adaptive interpolation, how smooth are things going to be and smooth properties. In this case, I have set to everything in both cases. And uh, we have enable state forwarding, which basically allows us to synchronize the predicted values without a network transform, which is a nice uh, uh, thing. And we have the graphical object, which is the model right here. I assigned this before, which is why it is assigned again. And that's pretty much all we need to have right here. Okay, now I'm going to go back and enter play mode again. This time I'm sure everything will work. And let's go ahead and start a server and a client. And as you can see, we have our character we can move can jump and we can look around pretty cool stuff but that's what we're not what we're looking for we're looking for multiplayer things so let's go ahead and exit play mode let's do a quick build and we have the window up here let's go ahead and go to the editor going to start a server and a client here let's move to the side Let's grab our window and start a client. So as you can see, I can move around, I can jump, and everything is synchronized beautifully. And yes, let's go ahead and make this side here. Grab fish networking, let's maximize the game window. As you can see, we can jump. And things are pretty cool. Let's see here as well. Everything is very smooth. As you can see, even when I rotate quite quickly, both are synchronized beautifully. Now, let's go ahead and test this under, under a bit of stress. So let's go ahead and exit this. And by stress, I mean if you have latency, a very high amount of latency in this case. Let's enable uh, simulation. And I'm going to have latency of 300 milliseconds, 
I'm going to have uh, out of order packets, like 25% of the packets are going to be out of order, and I'm going to have 10% packet loss, which is insane, by the way. Not unrealistic, but very high, like you would have a very bad experience if you have 10% um, packet loss in a real game. Let's go ahead and build our project. Let's go and zoom in, snap the windows, enter play mode here, and start a server and a client. As you can see, that did you notice the latency? That was insane. Let's move and jump. Since this is the local host, you will not see anything different, but if we go to the client, you can see that even though I have 300 milliseconds of latency, uh, the cursor moves. There is, of course, chattering due to packet loss, but things are smooth, and Fish Networking is trying to correct the values as much as it can. See, let's paste it here, and you can see that even though on the client there, there could be some you know discrepancies, it is correcting it. If you notice on the left and right, okay, um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Of course, I'm going to leave the completed project in the de description down below where you can download it. And there will also be a blog post detailing this um, video, showing you a step-by-step -step of the setup. So I hope you enjoy it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.